And we're going to be looking at the artwork of Daniel Ray's. You can check out his gallery or you can contact him for work by going to the address that you see below his gallery there on ArtStation. This is the first piece, uh, Vampire Queen, as he named it. There are several things that I know I want to address before I even start the paint over. I've already completed them, so we'll look at that in just a moment where I take the piece. There are two primary problems that I see offhand that are my, my big goals. One is the color and one is the values. Right now there is a lot of contrast in the shadows and the lights on the face as well as the rest of the skin. This just is problematic because this character is not receiving any direct light. The skin has a very strong sort of magenta purple color and the sole light source is very cyan. It's a very cold sort of green blue. Now I could see that in some artwork with some styles you could pull that off and it would be acceptable. However, it does appear that he's going for a more realistic take on his images. So I'm going to hold him to that direction. First, let's pull out and we'll take a look at where I took this image and how I addressed these problems with this. First is I flattened out the skin tone. See, in this case, we really get the idea that she is being backlit. Her skin does not have as much value change in it. It does not have the light and dark. I also look at the face and see that this eye and this eyebrow are drifting far too low on the face. This can happen when you're drawing a character at an angle and it just sort of throws your you know, perspective off of how you're looking at it. I would suggest that you would go over here to your grabby hand, go under that to rotate view tool and just rotate your canvas so that the character is upright to you when you're painting it and it's a lot easier for you to notice those problems and be able to correct those and then once you get finished painting that angled spot then you can rotate it back and paint everything else the way it is upright. We also see that I cool down the skin tone a lot I, and if you look at it it is really almost just a straight gray. It's very close just over to the gray side but gray looks warm compared to cyan. What is not important is the actual color of the skin. What is important is the color that the skin is painted in relative to the colors that are in the scene around it. Gray is to cyan what peach might be to gray. That is, peach looks warm compared to gray the same amount that gray looks warm compared to cyan, if you can follow the logic there. And that's what I've done in this case. Now, I also looked at some references. Now, I don't know what references he did or did not use in this image, but I wanted some just for me to look at in order to add a bit more authenticity and a bit more realism, because honestly, as much as I know about lighting, as many rules and things that I know, there were nuances to lighting and skin tone that I simply don't know. I need to reference something good. The references I pulled up is the primarily one I used is uh, one from the movie Amelie. I save a library of screen captures from movies to reference the lighting and value schemes and color schemes from in order to try to find one that is similar to whatever project I'm working on. This one from Amelie shows the principles that I'm talking about. See, she has no direct light. She's being backlit by the projector in the theater and her skin has flattened out a lot. The only real difference between the objects color-wise is the innate color of that object. That is, the skin tone is light compared to her dark hair. It's not light because there's a light beam on it making it lighter. It's just flat skin tone versus flat hair. These are very distinct shadows. They're pretty sharp. And what I want to do is soften those out a lot. I also want to address uh, creating more planes with the image. So I did that by lightening the wall and the window. So it is halfway between the values that she is and what the background is. I also incorporated an image into the background. This is a 
photo from a stock photo site, uh, photobash.org. I just set that down like 27% and dropped that into the window. And I think that's helpful. It gives some sort of location to her. One of the other problems is the glass. The glass is being handled almost like metal down here. This could almost pass for chrome. So what we're going to do is being a little more subtle with the glass and make sure that we find some references. I did find a reference of a wine glass on Google. So I didn't copy it, but I did look at the way that the lighting pattern works in that. What we want to see is how does it behave? Here we see a problem where the glass is getting really dark. See, it's reflecting this dark red down there. And that just wouldn't happen. Glass naturally, this kind of glass, the crystal glass, naturally will take on the color of the thing behind it because it's transparent. But it will get darker along seams, edges, rims, that sort of thing. So you see along the top where the glass has a rim that it's, it multiplies that darkness as it folds on itself. And you have that down here a little bit. Otherwise, it primarily just highlights. I also adjusted the top so that you can see a value change between the top and the side. On this original version, it was pretty much the same. We do want to give a bit of three-dimensionality to that. Now, a question that I didn't try to answer but should be asked is the attire and the design uh, dealing with the elegance. So I take it that this is supposed to be an elegant character. She's a vampire queen. She's an elegant pose. She's in front of a gothic window. And she's holding a crystal glass of blood or wine. However, the design of the attire for the character doesn't really match that aesthetic. And this is why. These are very blocky shapes. Now, in the original, he did have uh, some little lacy sort of thing here, I guess. Uh, I just painted that out because I didn't want to have to draw back the lacy stuff. But it doesn't matter because this is a big blocky shape. It's just a big rectangle with another rectangle in it with straight lines, with more straight lines. With this shape is a very big, flat, hard sort of almost, I want to say industrial armor sort of shape. This is not an elegant shape. Now, it does have curves, but what I would expect is it to have, like, fluting on it. Like, it would come up here, and it would have little cross designs, almost like laced fabric, and it would have holes in it, and it would have this sort of gothic architecture design, you know, built into it with these little flourishes. And, like, and again, it just, it would have these internally cut, designed little holes in it. And this would have, you know, some sort of little edging on it. And maybe it has, you know, little uh, straps that come across it. Something more elegant than just these big flat shapes. So that it is consistent. You have something here that is an elegant shape. Lots of little detail with little chains. And back here you have the little straps. That's cool. I think that's good. But those two need to be carried out through the whole thing so that you're continuing that sort of elegantness throughout the entire thing. That way, it has a cohesive vision. What you're trying to do here is create a hierarchy. What is the single aspect that you're trying to hold up in this image? I would say offhand it was elegance. So let's run with that. Let's do beautiful things. Let's do intricate things. Okay, that is all the time we're going to spend on this one. So let me close that and we'll open up the second one and go from there.